Hello and welcome to this Electrical Science and Principles training video. In this video we're going to explain an answer to question 7 in the 8202 Level 2 exam from March 2022. All the information we're about to discuss can be found on the City and Guilds website, so we're not giving away answers to future exams, we're just explaining past answers to past questions and hopefully helping you polish up your knowledge and technique if perhaps you've got an exam coming up. Now, if you're finding the channel helpful and you'd like to say thanks, then please click the link in the description to buy me a coffee, although personally I prefer tea, so it's even better value for you. But there's absolutely no pressure there, it's just there if you want to do so. We appreciate times are hard financially, uh, and so please don't feel the need to spring any cash on that. It's just occasionally people ask me if they can buy me a drink to say thanks. So, the question is, what is the diameter of a conductor with a cross-sectional area of 6 mm squared? And then we've got four answers. A, 1.27 millimetres, B, 1.38 millimetres, C, 2.24 millimetres, or D, 2.76 millimetres. Now, I'm going to show you how to answer this question in two different ways, uh, a slightly harder way uh, and a slightly easier way. I'll show you the slightly harder first uh, and then the slightly easier way second, so you can make your own mind up which one you would rather use should a similar question come up in the future. So let's get started uh, with the first way that we're going to solve this question. Okay, so the first way that we're going to solve this question is by transposition. Now, we've got the cross-section area of the cable and we're trying to find the diameter. So we're going to use the old classic formula A equals pi. Now, this is where this gets interesting because we could go one of two ways with this, but I'm going to show you uh, a slightly different way. Because we're trying to find the diameter and not the radius, we're not going to go pi r squared like we normally would. We're going to use the other option, which is pi d squared over 4. So that is the way of finding the cross-sectional area of a conductor, or uh, a circle rather, um, if you know the diameter rather than the radius. Of course, we could just divide it by 2 and get the radius, but I think this is just a slightly more kind of engineering way of solving this question. So let's work through this line by line. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to start transposing this and I've got content on the way about transposition to help you if you're struggling with any step of this. Uh, but what we've got to do is look at this and think, right, uh, what order do I do things in here? So using our bod mass, we do the d squared first and then we times it by pi and then we divide it by 4. So that's the order of operations if we were trying to solve a, a, a question with this if we were trying to find the area. So once we know the order of operations, we just work backwards up that list. So the last thing we do is divide by 4. So when we're transposing, we do that bit first. We get rid of that bit first. And here, instead of dividing by 4, we're going to multiply both sides by 4. And if we multiply this side by 4, it becomes 4a. Whereas on this side, if we divide by 4 and times by 4, then that bottom bit just cancels out. We're left with pi d squared. And then uh, looking at this side again, we do d squared and then times it by pi. So the first thing that we do when we transpose is the last thing we do when we're solving the question. So in this case, we would say uh, the opposite of timesing by pi is to divide by pi. If we divide both sides by pi, we end up with 4a over pi is equal to d squared. And then if we want to get d by itself, then what we do is the opposite of squaring, which is, of course, square rooting. So we would end up with uh, the square root of that whole thing, 4a over pi is equal to d. And that's how we'd find the diameter. So we'll just flip that round because... My OCD won't let it do uh, that any other way. It's uh, acting up now because I've used blue twice, which I was trying to change it every time, but just got a bit sidetracked there. So uh, let's try and do this calculation. So we've got D is equal to the square root of 4 times A over pi. So in this case, we're going to do uh, the square root of 4 times the cross-sectional area, which is 6. Uh, now, because these are both in millimetres, we don't need to start messing around with the numbers there. Uh, we can just leave that as 6, so then we divide that by uh, pi. So that's going to give us an answer. Now, at this stage, I wouldn't work through it uh, line by line. I'd just basically put all of that into the calculator, hit equals and see what we get. So we're going to do the square root of, and this is why I love the Casio FX85 GTX, because I can put that in exactly as it looks on the board there. So four times six divided by pi and then the whole thing square rooted. And we come out with 
2.76. So we've got an answer there of 2.76 millimetres. And there's our answer, the diameter of that cross, uh, the diameter of that conductor with a cross section area of six millimeters squared is 2.76 millimeters. Happy days. So that's one way we can do it. We can do it with transposition. Now, if you're not incredibly confident with transposition and you're kind of looking at that and going, I'm not sure how we've got from there to there, uh, there is actually kind of, uh, I don't know if it's any easier really, but a different way of doing it that you might be more comfortable with. So we know the area and we're trying to find the diameter. We already know what the answer is now. So that's a bit of a spoiler for this section of the video. But what we can do is we could kind of do this via a brute force method, if you like. What we could do is figure out for each one of these diameters that we've been given as possible answers, we could figure out what the area of a conductor uh, with these diameters would be. And that'll get us to the right answer. So we'd go at this point, we'd say, right, I want to find the area. So I know that uh, area is equal to, and again, we're going to use that uh, other formula that might be a little bit unusual to you if you've not come across it before, but it's very similar to pi r squared. We just do pi d squared over four, put the numbers in. So we've got pi times by 1.27 squared divided by four, and then that's going to spit our answer out when we put that into the calculator. So again, uh, press the fraction button and then uh, pi times by 1.27 squared divided by 4. That's going to give us uh, 1.2667 millimetres squared. So there we go. We've come out with uh, an answer of 1.2. So rounding off, that'll be 1.27 millimetres squared. So right off the bat, we know that's not the right answer. We know that that is wrong. What we could then do is very simply just work our way down the list, nice and simple. Same thing again, a equals pi d squared over four. And then we'd say pi is equal to, uh, sorry, we'd say the area is equal to pi times by 1.38 squared over four. And then again, we put that in. Now again, the nice thing about using the Casio FX85 GTX. I'm not promoted by these, uh, by the way, this isn't product placement. Uh, this is my own money I've spent on this calculator. I just happen to love it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, we can move the cursor around, so we don't even need to put the whole thing in again. We can just put in uh, the relevant numbers. So we can just change that to 1.38 squared divided by four, which is gonna give us 1.5 millimeters squared. Familiar conductor size to those of us in the electrical industry. Uh, so again, we can see that number is not the same as that number so the cross-sectional area of a conductor that has a diameter of 1.38 millimeters is 1.5 millimeter squared not what not six mil, uh, millimeters squared so let's do this uh, last bit now a is equal to pi d squared over four you'll notice every time i do this calculation i'm putting the formula down again now i like to do that because um, it just helps you to memorize it. So this was one of the biggest complaints I used to get from my learners when I was teaching, uh, that I'd, I'd make them every time they answer the question, it always went formula, numbers, answer. Partly because that gets you in the habit of doing it for the exam. Uh, and as we'll see in a future video for slightly more tricky questions, that's really, really important uh, because it can get you points where perhaps you might not have got points. Uh, but also it just helps you to remember it. Uh, people sometimes used to say to me, my learners sometimes used to say, how do you remember all these formulas? And it's just because I was disciplined with myself and I wrote them down every time I do a calculation. I still do it now, uh, even if I'm just doing a calculation on a scrap of paper. I just can't get out of the habit of going formula, numbers, answer. And it just, it really just helps to kind of cement these things in your brain, uh, which you won't really regret in life. Uh, so, uh, enough philosophical musings. Uh, pi times 2.24 we're doing now. Squared over 4 is equal to... And again, we can just put that straight into the calculator. I don't even need to change any of the formula, just those numbers there. So that just becomes 2.24. And that's going to give me an answer of 3.94, which is getting on for four mil. Not quite there, but close. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully if you've followed the video and if you've stuck with it this long, well done. But hopefully at this point you can now see 
uh, that if we do this bottom calculation now, a equals pi d squared over four, we end up with pi times by 2.76 uh, squared divided by four. And that's going to give us, when we volley that into the calculator, any guesses? 2.76, so again, just change that to 76, is equal to 5.98. Now, what's quite interesting about that as an answer is you can see that actually there's no um, exact value there that gets us to exactly six mil. But when you think this is 0 0.02 square millimeters off six mil, if you try and picture 0 0.02 square millimeters, that's a tiny, tiny little kind of area. <laughs> it's a very, very small square. And so actually that is so close to that, that that is the only answer. And this is actually one of the things that I used to say to my learners again, is that sometimes when you do an exam, you've got to look for the most right answer. So you may not always get it exactly, but you can, you can get in the ballpark. It's interesting the way this worked out. I'd suggest that actually perhaps the examiner is expecting you to go down that road. Uh, or maybe it's just a matter of we couldn't, couldn't round that off any other way to get it more accurate, but who knows? Who knows what goes on inside the mind of City and Guild's exam setters. So there we go. Uh, that's the answer to question seven in the level two 8202 exam from March 2022. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to do it a lot quicker than that in the real exam, otherwise you're going to be running out of time by the time you get down to uh, question 60. Uh, but you've got two options there of different ways that you can go. Uh, so just pick whichever one you prefer. And if you get a similar question, you're a little bit uh, better prepared for that now. So please hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to turn your notifications on so you'll get all the latest content and make sure that you stay tuned for the next question in this series. Again, if you'd like to buy me a coffee or a tea, just to say thanks for any of the videos that have helped you, then please click the link in the description. But again, there is absolutely no pressure to do so. Uh, the content will continue to be produced regardless. We know that times are quite tricky financially uh, and so we'll keep the content free. Uh, but all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.